Hello, my name is Elif. I make anatomy and medicine videos. If you like my videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel and follow me on my Instagram and Facebook pages. In this video, we will talk about clinical hand anatomy on palmar aspect and focused on wrist. Before we start, let's talk about the position of the hand. The position of the hand based on the normal anatomical position, which is the palm pointing forward while the fingertips are in the downward position and the thumb is pointing outward, which is laterally, and the little finger is towards the body, which is located medial side. So this hand is a right hand for the based on this definition. In this video, I drew the right hand in the upside down position for easy learning, so you can easily examine it your, with your own hands. But please consider all the positions I have mentioned based on the normal anatomical position. Skeleton of hand starts from wrist. Here is the wrist articulates with two bones. On thumb side, which is lateral side, it articulates with radius, and on pinky finger side, which is medial side, it articulates with ulna. Inferior to radius and ulna, wrist consists of eight couple bones arranged in two rows. From thumb to pinky finger, which is from lateral to medial side, there are four bones in the proximal row of couples and four bones in the distal row of couples. Bones in proximal row from thumb to pinky finger on palmar side of the hand are os scaphoidium, os lunatum, os triquetrum, and os pisiforme. Bones in the distal row from thumb to pinky finger on palmar side of the hand os trapezium, os trapezoidium, os capitatum and os hamatum. These are anatomical name of couples. To sum up all couples from proximal to distal and lateral to medial side. Scaphoid, lunate, trucheatrum, pisiform. These are proximal row. Trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and hamate. These are distal row. Let's take the initial letters and remember this mnemonic. Sally left the party to take Katie home. Also pay attention, trapezium word has U and M letters, which is similar with thumb word. So you can remember trapezium is on the side of thumb. Carpals are named according to their shape. Now let's focus on each one of them. The scaphoid word is derived from scaphoides word in Greek. It means boat. Because of this bone shaped like a boat, it's named as scaphoid. The scaphoid bone is biggest carpal bone on proximal row. It is also the most commonly fractured carpal among all carpals. Generally, falling on outstretched hand causes this fracture, so this injury known as initial letters of this cause. So we can say Foch injury. Foch injury, falling on outstretched hand means initial MRI may not reveal scaphoid fracture. After two or three weeks later, the incident, fracture site reveal due to bone resorption because of Poor blood supply to the proximal part of the scaphoid, healing process take long time. If there is not enough blood supply during the process, even avascular necrosis of proximal fragment of the scaphoid may develop. Lunate. This word derived from luna word in Latin. It means moon or crescent shape because this bone is crescent shaped. Maybe you can remember the Sailor Moon cartoon and in that cartoon there was a cat named as Luna and Luna had a crescent shape on her forehead so you can correlate Luna and crescent shape from this example. Lunate is the most commonly dislocated carpal bone among all carpals. I drew the lateral view of Lunate and you can see how dislocation occurs to the palmar side. Triquetrum is derived from triquetrus in Latin. Tri means three. Quatro means corner, so this bone is three-cornered shape. It is actually in pyramidal shape and named as triquetrum. Pisiform is P-shaped bone that lies on the palmar side of triquetrum. Pisum means P in Latin. Because of bone shaped like a P, it named as pisiform. It is the smallest carpal bone among all couples. From lateral to medial, the four bones of the distal row of couples starts with trapezium. It is four-sided bone and it's called a trapezium because it looks like it. It articulates with first metacarpal distally, so it is on the thumb side. Trapezoidium is wedge-shaped bone and smallest carpal of distal row. Please pay attention. I don't say smallest carpal bone. I say smallest carpal of distal row. If I say smallest carpal bone, you will remember the pisiform bone. Trapezoid derived from Greek word trapezion, which means irregular quadrilateral. Capitate. It is derived from caput word in Latin, which means head. It is the largest bone of all carpals. Hamate is a wedge-shaped bone and has a hooked process which named as hook of the hamate. It is known as hamulus osis hamati in Latin. Hamulus means hook, osis means bone, hamati means hamate. So we can translate this as 
hook of the hemate bone. An ulnar nerve is close to the hook of the hemate. Fracture of hemate may end up non immune fractured bony parts, and ulnar nerve may be injured because of its proximity to hook. Ulnar nerve innervates intrinsic muscles in the hand, and this injury will result of decreased grip strength of the hand, because intrinsic muscles are responsible for performing fine movements of the hand. There are five metacarpals distal to the carpals. After metacarpals, phalanges follows. There are 14 phalanges, two in the thumb and three in other four fingers, proximal to distal, proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, and distal phalanx. There is a fibrous band between on medial and lateral side of the wrist. On medial side, the piciform bone and hook of the hemate, and on lateral side, tubercle of scaphoid and crest of trapezium. This band extends in between these bony structures and it named as flexor retinaculum or transverse carpal ligament. The space between the carpal bones and these ligaments is the canalis carpi or carpal tunnel and structures which is inside the carpal tunnel, in other words, deep to flexor retinaculum and superficial to the flexor retinaculum are clinically important. Flexor retinaculum has two slips. One of them is on the medial superficial side and the other one is located on the lateral side. Especially, medial superficial slip is important clinically. It is attached to the piciform bone and it forms a small canal known as Guion's canal. The ulnar vessels and nerves pass deep to this slip. Occasionally, compression of the ulnar nerve may occur within this canal, which I mentioned before while talking on hemate bone. Now let's learn the structures to the superficial to flexor retinoculum. These are ulnar nerve, ulnar artery, palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve, palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve, tendon of palmaris longus muscle. For this, let me remind you, this muscle is one of the wrist flexor muscles which originates from medial epicondyl of humerus and inserts on palmar aponeurosis and flexor retinoculum of the hand. Structures deep to flexor retinoculum are Tendons of flexor digitorum profundus muscles, tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis muscles, median nerve, tendon of flexor pollicis longus muscle. I have talked about lateral and medial slip of flexor retinoculum. We know medial superficial slip, and now on the lateral slip there is tendon of flexor carpi radialis muscle. Carpal tunnel syndrome. So the median nerve passes deep to flexor retinoculum. In other words, it extends inside the carpal tunnel. If the carpal tunnel narrows for any reason, the synovial sheets will swell due to fluid retention and compress the structures in this area. Especially the median nerve passing through here is the most affected structure. This nerve supplies two sensory branches to the skin of the hand. So, paresthesia, hypostasia, which means reduced sensation, or even anesthesia may occur in lateral three and a half digit. Also, weakness, I mean progressive loss of strength and coordination in abductor pollicis brevis and opponent's pollicis muscles, so thumb will be unable to pose. So, you will see in patients having hardness while buttoning a shirt or holding objects or opening jars. Cause of carpal tunnel may be a trauma, injury or rheumatoid arthritis. Risk factor may be anatomical or female gender because females are at risk having narrow wrist or inflammatory conditions. Treatment option, a partial or complete surgical division of the flexor retinaculum. I mean, carpal tunnel release may be required. Guion's canal syndrome. Between the piciform and the hook of a mate, there is pisohamate ligament. The area between this ligament and bones is called as Guion's canal and the ulnar nerve passes through it, which I mentioned before. Compression in the Guion's canal as a result of this neighborhood may affect the ulnar nerve. It may result in hypostasia in the medial one and the half digits and weakness of the intrinsic muscles in the hand. So there will be hardness of the while performing fine movements of the hand, such as gripping.